About two months ago, I had a, gotten my I2C driver board from X Camera from their crowd supply listing. I also got their SPI driver board as well, but I'm not sure if I have any SPI devices to test it with yet. However, I do have plenty of I2C devices, and since nobody on YouTube has touched this yet, I'll take it on. I also want to use this opportunity to look at serial EE prom devices, because while there are several videos demonstrating how to use it and plenty of data sheets, I found there really weren't many good examples and the data sheets were a little bit misleading. Looking at the data sheet for the AT24C02C from Atmel, I want to find the information on how to write to and read from the device as well as to select a specific address. On early EE prom devices, the address was selected through a series of data lines and then the 8 bits of data were output in a parallel manner. The serial chips, however, do not have enough pins to output 8 bits at once. Instead, they have a single pin to release the data in a serial stream to be processed down the pipeline. It is important to note that the same pin that releases the data is the same pin that releases the input address, or receives the input address, making the chip theoretically slower than a parallel equivalent. Fortunately, this is not really an issue in most cases because serial data can move faster than parallel data without needing to factor in more complicated design aspects like impedance matching and propagation delay. Now these pages here are going to be the most useful for testing the device. They outline the signals needed to communicate with the device as well as addressing information. Here is where I encountered my first piece of misleading information. I2C has a start bit initiated by the master device, and then the master device sends an 8-bit device address which includes the read-write bit. So the device address is actually only 7 bits. The datasheet says the first 4 bits of the address are 1010 or hexadecimal A. The problem is hexadecimal A anything is not a legal I2C address. And this is how every tutorial and datasheet fell short of the explanation, and I facepalmed pretty hard when I figured out where everything was going wrong. 1010 is in fact hexadecimal A, but with three more bits below it, it becomes 1010000, or hexadecimal 50, which is a legal address. Due to how binary numbers work when converting to hex, I would have merely stated in datasheet, the first three bits are 101 or hexadecimal 5. Looking at other data sheets for similar devices, they all have the same issue and it could be a very significant hang up for less experienced people. Now for the fun, I'll write something, then read it back. The data sheet says it can support multiple sequential writes or so called page writes, and the device won't begin to burn the data until the stop bit is sent. The good news is, if you forget the stop bit, the EE prom doesn't appear to do anything with the currently existing data, although I wouldn't push it for any mission critical applications. The bad news is, if the stop bit is forgotten and a new start condition declared, the software for the I2C driver crashes, requiring a full restart of the software and a power cycle of the attached devices. I wish there was an included switch on the board that could power cycle the devices for you, because right now your best option is to unplug and replug the USB connector. After the stop bit is sent, the device will begin to burn the data. There is a pin you can sample to see if the device is still writing, but that operation will happen way too fast to be tested on this board. Now I can read the data. In order to read what I have written though, I'll need to go back to the start address of 00, which is done by starting a write operation at the address and then restarting with a read operation. The device also has sequential read operations, so, long, so as long as the master device doesn't send an acknowledge bit, the slave will keep reading sequentially byte by byte. And there we have it. The EEPROM appears to work as intended, as well as a driver board for testing I2C devices without having to program an MCU. The only downside to the EE prom that I can think of is it would be very difficult to drive with discrete logic components. But with most projects today being done with Arduino and other MCUs on the market, that really isn't an issue. The benefit of this design is a smaller chip with decent volume. 
It also allows for rapid sequential read and write operations without having to manually increment the address pins, which is useful for storing large amounts of data. Now for the driver board, I couldn't be happier with this device. Sure, the software seems pretty beta in appearance and functionality, and yeah, the logic is locked at 3.3 volts. But the direct bit control and otherwise simple interface, if you're familiar with the communication protocol, make for a very enjoyable experience. The display giving active feedback of the commands sent over the data lines help ensure the intended data stream is being parsed out correctly, especially when multiple bytes are being sent at a time. And finally, having multiple breakouts of the pins provide a convenient way to sample the data lines with an oscilloscope. I have also discovered a great use case for this module in programming serial EE prom chips without a dedicated programmer or programming an Arduino sketch. This thing has definitely earned a spot in my tool chain. I really hope the SBI driver is as good and look forward to having a device to test it with. Now I got this device from Crowd Supply, but I believe Adafruit has started to sell it on their web store as well. So anybody out there who likes to screw around with sensors and modules may want to get out there and give this a try because it's small and really useful. As for X camera, I really like what you've done here, but I would love to see a case for it. Even if it's a cheap layered acrylic case for it, so it's less likely to be damaged. Just a thought. See y'all next time.